Calorimetry. Color. Calorimetry. Not, not color. I guess it's calor, isn't it? Calor. It's name. Not calor. It's not the same thing as color. color. No, so it's like calories. So this comes from the word calories. Yeah. So that's how we're measuring heat. That's a unit of heat. So metree stands for like a meter. Measure, yeah. Meter or measure. So, so we're, we're going to measure, measure heat. Calories or um, measure heat. Yeah. Okay. So how do you measure heat is the topic of today's podcast. With a heat monitor. With a heat monitor. But the problem with heat is it has to be measured indirectly. Yeah. And so we're going to teach you guys the process or really the scientific uh, method that you use to measure heat. Okay. So that's what we're going to talk about. Okay. Well, before we, before we start, Mr. Sams, we should talk about thermochemical equations, just to kind of just do a little review here for our brains. Yep. There's something called heat of combustion. What the heck is combustion? Uh, combustion is when something reacts with oxygen. Um, right, usually we have hydrocarbons yeah, that react a, with oxygen. A cha or a cho reaction. Yep, and we make CO2 and H2O as our products. All right, so the heat of combustion is the heat change for a combustion reaction. Okay, mm -hmm. and so actually, what people do, usually don't care that they make carbon dioxide and water; they actually care they also produce some yeah. variety of energy. Right. And that energy, by the way, one thing true about combustion reactions is that all the time they're exothermic, exothermic, mm -hmm. which means their energy is released. Or we would say delta H is always negative. Negative for combustion reactions. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's talk about so just a little review, probably. If a reaction is endothermic here. Well, the value of delta H goes on the? Uh, the left side left of the equation. Left side, the reactant side. So it always goes on the reactant side. Mm -hmm. So if I've got um, A plus B makes C, the energy would go on the left side for endothermic reactions. The reverse is true for exothermic reactions. So if I've got A plus B turns into C, you get energy produced, and so it's on the right side or the product side right. of a chemical reaction. Stuff we talked about before. But just good review. Yep. It's very important. All right, calorimetry. We're just talking about calorimetry, which we introduced at the beginning. It is an accurate and precise measurement of heat change for a chemical and physical process. So we okay. want to measure heat. Right. We can't and, do that directly, though. We have to measure yeah, what heat does. It's does always something. done directly, indirectly, pardon right. me. And so here is kind of a way to look at this whole process right here. Here we have a container down here. Okay, and the, the reaction is taking place in the yellow container, and then energy, in this case, is being released. It's been an exothermic reaction, and it's heating up the surroundings, which is blue. Right, and those surroundings are probably going to be water yeah. in the devices that we use to measure this. So. Um, yeah, basically we're going to measure temperature change in water. If yeah. it, the temperature of the water goes up, it's an exothermic reaction. If the temperature of the water goes down, it's an endothermic Perfect. reaction. Perfect. That's exactly right. All right, let's talk about this. A calorimeter is yes. a device that measures <laughs> the calories. Yeah. It's insulated, so it's an insulated device, and um, it can measure the absorption or the release of the heat in a chemical or physical change. Basically, the, our calorimeters that we've been playing with are those, you know, what, five cent? Um, styrofoam cups. Styrofoam cups. Yep. But you can buy the $500 variety or $5,000 variety, and you get a very, very specific one that's an insulated container. The yeah. reaction takes place here, and they measure it. They've got thermometers in and out, and this is this blue substance right here is just water, most right. likely. Now, in here, we've got a little chamber that the reaction takes place yes. in. Yes. Uh, for our purposes in our class, our our reactions are all going to take place in water, but they're going to be dissolved in water. That's Correct. not going to be in a little chamber in the water. And as we've already said, usually water is the chemical that captures the heat, and you use the equation Q equals MC delta T, which we okay. talked about in a previous podcast. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Here's, Here's our, our cheap calorimeter that we get to use. All right. Now, we need to define one term, by the way, and I'm, we've probably used this, but it's probably important to just kind of review it for it. The term enthalpy we have been referring to as delta H, which is the change in H or heat. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the fancy term is it's called delta enthalpy. H. Enthalpy. Well, like I said, it's just delta H or K, or and the equation, which we've already talked about, is Q equals MC delta T. Sort, sort of. of. So here's actually, how do you calculate delta H? Well, right. the first thing I want you to understand is the units for delta H is kilojoules divided by moles. Right. So to do this, what you're going to do is you're going to have to um, get the numbers from two different places. To right. find the number for kilojoules, you'll use the equation Q equals MC delta T, where Q is your kilojoules, if you will. Well, you'll actually get joules. Joules, right. Q gives you joules. You're going to have to turn it into kilojoules yep. by dividing by 1,000. You must have it in kilojoules, yes. not the joules. Okay. And the moles is the moles of, actually, I want you to write this down. It would be the moles of the limiting reactant 
Um, and usually we're going to mass something. If you know the mass, you can quickly convert it to the moles mm -hmm. using uh, a conversion of grams to moles. Yeah, molar mass. All right. Then you just take the kilojoules divided by the moles, and you have delta H. That is exactly correct. All right. All right. So I think we should actually do an experiment. Let's Mr. do Sam. it. So let's do an experiment where we actually, uh, well, we actually do this. Yeah. Okay. All right. Today I want to talk about how we can find the heat of reaction of magnesium plus hydrochloric acid. So hydrochloric acid right here, I have 100 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid is close enough to um, the density of water, I can assume that 100 milliliters is 100 grams. So I'm going to pour that into my cheap calorimeter. Okay. I'm going to measure the initial temperature with my trusty thermometer. And the original temperature is, looks like 19 and some change. It's going down, 19.21. All right, 19.1 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to write that down. I got 19.1 degrees Celsius. Now I have my magnesium. I need to know its mass. So I'm going to stick it on the scale. So as I stick it on the scale, its weight is, mass actually, is 0.67 grams. Now I'm going to put this in my cool data table that I have in just a minute. And I'm going to just add this to this and we're going to see what happens. Now an important thing is if the temperature goes up, it's going to be exothermic. It's going to release energy. If the temperature goes down, it is going to be endothermic, or delta H will be positive. So we're going to see what happens. We're at our 19.1 degrees Celsius. I stick it in there, and if you look here, it's fizzing. Mr. Sands will zoom in on that. All right. It's fizzing very rapidly. The temperature is increasing quite rapidly. It's producing hydrogen gas, by the way, which is quite cool. Yeah. <laughs> And it's gassing out Mr. Bergman because it mm -hmm. stinks. 37, 119. This is very exothermic. 41 degrees. And we're waiting for it to completely react, which means essentially we're waiting to stop fizzing. So we're trying to get that to stop fizzing right there. 46 degrees. It's quite, quite warm now. Whew! I would not stick my finger in there now. The fizzing well, I is stick just my finger in there to begin yeah, because it's hydrochloric acid. acid. Yeah, so looks like we are done now. It's at forty-eight point seven degrees Celsius. Okay. I think we should go back and uh, do the calculations and find what is the value of delta H for this reaction.